I have just moved to St. Paul and mom is eager to visit. My new address is in the Cathedral Hill neighborhood and that impresses her. Mom loves anything churchy and classical. She still prays in Latin. She's hoping the proximity of the cathedral might rub off on me. Hers is an easy faith. Mine is fractured. I tell mom this house I'm moving into was designed by the same architect who built the Glen Sheen mansion in Duluth. Mom is from Duluth. She loves chance connections like that, and she did delights in the history surrounding me. Old cobblestone alleyways have been restored. City crews and volunteers chipped away the concrete and exposed fading bricks, some in better shape than others. She tells me this neighborhood has the highest concentration of writers in the United States. Where did you hear that, Mom? On NPR. When did you start listening to NPR? Honey, there might be a lot you don't know about your dear old mother. <laughs> to me, it's an accident how I come to live in the shadow of the cathedral, renting a room in this fancy vintage home with its famous designer. To mom, there are no accidents. We walk arm in arm to Sweeney's bar at the far end of the alley. I don't get the same rush from the old bricks as she does, stubbing my toe on a broken one. Well, pick up your feet, honey. <laughs> Such a mom thing to say. Even though it's summer, she orders a hot toddy with an extra splash of bitters, and we toast each other. <clears throat> For mom's next visit, I have promised to take her to evening mass at the cathedral. Kids and bikes choke the alley, and she taps the clock on the dash. Don't worry, mom, we'll be on time. No, look, it's 444. Make a wish. It's a sign from the angels. They're waiting for you. <laughs> Inside the mammoth church, I stare at stone cold statues. Mom begins singing, Pani Sangelicus. And I nestle next to her. She is singing in Latin, Oh, raise me, Rabilis. Her sweet soprano warms me like a long ago lullaby. I make note of the translation written below, oh thing miraculous. But that was August and now it's Halloween, mom's favorite holiday. Here in a crowded hospital room, after a frantic helicopter ride, we watch her struggled breathing. My eight brothers, three sisters and I surround her bed we begin to hum a lullaby learned from her so long ago. Bye, bye. Off to dreamland, little one, she would croon. Her steady voice over and over chanted the mournful tune, soothing restless babies. Now in this unfamiliar place, it is our turn and we sing to her. Bye, bye, bye. Ma'am, the nurse says gently, the medicine is making your hands swell. Your daughter is going to take your rings. You can have them back tomorrow, she lies. I shove the rings, three of them, into my pocket, a shallow, unsafe place. I can't deal with these rings right now. I stroke her hands, her lovely, hearty hands, looking fragile without the rings. I want to burn this picture into my brain, how beautiful her hands are. Mom, what about all those things we don't yet know about you? But this was not a day for miracles. <clears throat> Night comes quickly. I find myself walking the cobblestones to Sweeney's. A neighbor stops me in the alley with words of sympathy. I reach into my pocket for the comfort of mom's rings to hold on to something that still contains her. My pocket is empty. It's empty. We search everywhere for the rings, retracing steps, calling the hospital. I can't bring myself to tell my family. After the funeral, I drive home in freezing rain. A song on the radio shatters me, but I sit in the driveway until it ends. I fumble with my keys to turn off the engine and the clock on the dash blinks, 4.44. A powerful urge pushes me forward. I step into the alley and turn towards Sweeney's. Perhaps a hot toddy is what compels me. 
The stones are slippery and I can hear mom's voice from last summer, pick up your feet, honey. I actually look down at my feet. Something shimmers, a splash of color that doesn't belong in a crevice between two broken bricks. I'm unable to move, afraid this vision will disappear. Icy rain burns my face and still they lay glistening in the rain. I kneel down and pluck the trio from their hiding place. Cradling them in my hands, I observe no dents, no scratches. Nothing has marred mom's rings. A truck driver eases around me and I focus on a night the previous week. Standing in this very spot, I see myself pulling keys out of my pocket, unaware of tiny, beautiful things tumbling earthward. How many trucks have driven down this alley in the days since Halloween, crunching the stones with their hefty loads? Perhaps the rings might have survived the harsh winter we were yet to have, but how would I have found them after I move away in May? Still, on this day, the rings are here, patiently waiting for me.